the Wendigo. A creature from the mythology of Algonquin Native Americans rises from the northeastern United States and southern Canada. It is born from pure cannibalism, and its hunger is never satisfied. There are a lot of stories surrounding the mysterious 13-mile road woods of northern New Hampshire. I've heard of the stories of hunting parties starving out there and resorting to cannibalism. There's no telling what happens out there. This story was told to me by my grandfather, who met one of the people involved. The year is 1957. His name is Arnold Watson. He loved to hunt, and he loved even more to take long hunting trips in the woods. Of course, he never went alone. He had a couple of old friends he'd take along, Andy Johnson and Daryl Trample. He hadn't seen them in years. So they all decided to go on a week, week long hunting trip. They packed up all their stuff, hunting rifles, blankets, tents, matches, a week's worth of ammunition and food. The three of them piled into Arnold's Chevy pickup truck. The ride through the winding dirt roads was long and bumpy. They were deep into the woods now, and the engine started making clicks and sputtering noises like it was breaking down. It slowed to a stop. Start, start, God damn it! S said Arnold as he banged on the wheel. Did you fill her up before we left? Asked Andy. I must have forgotten, Andy said as he, as he sighed and sat back in his seat. We might as well make camp here, but I don't want to get too far from the truck. So they ventured into the woods a bit and found a small clearing near a river where they could set up t their tents. It was already getting dark, so they started a fire, had a little something to eat, and went to bed. They slept with their guns at their bedside, just in case. They all slept soundly through the night. Arnold was the first to awake. He stood up and stretched, letting out a long yawn. He stepped outside of the tent and rubbed his eyes. He couldn't believe what he was saying. A bear had come and tossed everything about, and eaten almost all of their food. Ran Arnold ran into his tent, grabbed his rifle, and aimed at the bear. He was running. His running around had already startled the bear, and had gotten away before Arnold could get back get a clear shot. Andy, Daryl, get up! Damn bear's gotten all our food. Andy and Daryl scrambled up. What in the hell are you? Daryl stared open mouth at the remaining scraps of their food. Most of the shotgun shells had been thrown in the rip into the river, and only a few usable shells remained. Holy shit, what are we going to do now? We ain't got nothing. No food, no ammo, no... He was cut off by Andy. Just calm down, Daryl. I think there's more ammunition and ammo in the truck. He trailed off. Do you guys remember the way of the truck? Arnold asked nervously. I think it's, or no, this, this way? No, well it might have been this way, said Andy. Daryl smacked his hand on his face. You ain't got a damn idea what you're talking about. Daryl and Andy both lunged at each other and started wrestling, cursing in between breaths. Hey, 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 stop that. Arnold, Arnold pulled Daryl off of Andy. We gotta get along. We're in a survival situation now. Ain't no fun in games. We could easily die out here, and no one would ever find us. Our best bet would be to allow to follow the river. Maybe we could find a town or a trading post or something. Daryl snapped. A town out here? My ass! We're all we're all alone out here. We'll never find our way out. And he always had been the weak the been the weak one. Not very surprising that he's that he'd be the first one to break. They wandered along the banks of the river a bit for a bit, cold and hungry. But they didn't stop. Sounds started to come from the woods next to the river, like twigs snapping and leaves crunching. Andy perked up right up. What the hell was that? Andy whispered nervously. Probably just a rabbit, you wuss. Daryl snapped. Don't be so worrisome. 
A couple minutes passed, and Andy sat down to rest. I'll, I'll be just a minute. Go on without me, he panted. You sure? Yes. I won't be long, Andy assured. So they, so they continued. Suddenly, they heard. It was Andy. It was a blood-curdling scream filled, filled the air. Dara! Ah! The screen cut off quickly by a gurgling and sounds of something eating. Arnold and Daryl ran back along with the stream, screaming Andy's name. They heard a snarl and saw the silhouette of a tall, thin, snouted figure with something dripping from its mouth. It growled at them loudly and trotted off into the woods. What in the Lord's name was that? asked Daryl. How am I supposed to know? Strike a match so we can find Andy. Daryl struck the match and looked in horror at Andy's mangled remains on the ground. His face half devoured with his skull showing, blood and flesh covered in face. A whole section was torn out from his chest. His ribs were picked clean. His entrails were out and laying all over him, partly eaten. His thighs were ravaged. Parts where his bone were showing in his leg. Worst of all, a horrifying expression is displayed on his face, like he was frozen in time as soon as he saw the creature. Oh my god! Daryl started mumbling gibberish, curling into a ball and rocking slowly. Why him? Why? He stuttered. Arnold tried to comfort him, but he was hysterical. We gotta keep moving, buddy. We both loved him, but it's done. It's done now. And we gotta keep... We gotta move on. Daryl cut him off. How could you say that? You act like you don't even care about him. I loved him like a brother. Yet you don't even care. You don't even care, you selfish bastard. Daryl lunged at Arnold's throat. He gripped it tightly against the ground. Arnold struggled to get out of his grip. He kneeled, he kneed him in the stomach, and Daryl fell off to the ground. Arnold started pounding him in the face. Daryl was helpless. Arnold picked him up and threw his head against the tree. Daryl slumped to the ground, leaving a thick streak of crimson blood going down the tree. His eyes turned black, and he was crazed with bloodlust. Arnold started chewing on Daryl's left arm. But then he snapped out of it. What? What have I done? He looked at the blood covering on his hands. He stayed there with the bodies, not sleeping, just sitting with a blank expression, thinking of what he'd done. Eventually, Arnold realized it. It was his duty to get back to a town and tell people what had happened. He got up and started walking. He walked for hours. Then, the twig snapping came back, and the leaf crunching followed. He felt a warm breath on the back of his neck. He turned around slowly, and towering over him was the beast. Glowing yellow eyes, antlers in a body that seemed half rotted. The rib cage was exposed with rotten flesh in and around it. Blood and flesh dripped from its mouth, his face covered in raw muscle and deep cuts, and areas that weren't rotted, like his back and shoulders, were carpeted in a short, patchy, light brown fur. One of his arms was completely rotted to the bone. Arnold screamed and ran, but it leapt, leapt and tackled him. It growled in his face for a bit, and bit a chunk from his leg. Arnold screamed in agony, trying to escape from, from under it, and he squirmed and kicked until he got free, and, try, and tried to start punching it. This only angered it more, and it lunged at him again, but this time 
Arnold moved out of the way and the beast tumbled into the river. Arnold saw his chance. He tried his best to limp, o limp over to the river, where it was recovering f from the fall. Despite the excruciating pain, he tackled the beast and pushed all of his weight onto its head, trying to drown it. It snarled under the water and flailed its arms and legs, but Arnold kept his grip. It slowly became weaker and weaker until it silenced completely. Arnold sighed in relief and fell on it on his back onto the bank of the river. He rested for a while and tried to move on. He limped through the woods until morning when he found a road. Thank God, he thought. It's almost over. Arnold was on the road for only a short time before a truck came along. It pulled over and the man scrambling out of the driver's seat and helped Arnold. Jesus, man, what happened? Arnold replied tiredly. I'll explain soon. Water, a ride, please. The man looked befuddled. Of course, of course. Let me help you into the car. Arnold climbed, into, climbed in and took a big, long swig of water from the man's bottle. He explained the entire story to the man. The same one I just told you. That man was my grandfather. Arnold was taken to a hospital, but died due to an infection in the wound of his leg. Every once in a while, hunters will come back with stories of hearing loud, blood-curdling screams, or similar stories of cannibalistic beasts. Whether they're true or not, there's something lurking in the 13-mile woods. And if you ever decide to take a trip there, and you find an old 50s truck or an abandoned campsite, turn back. For God's sake, turn back. And if you don't, God help you.